two parish priests who were looking after St. Joseph, St. James and St. Thomas of Canterbury retired, uh, then I was asked to look after the whole area. And it, one of the things that I wanted to do was for there to be a, a shared leadership team. And uh, I wanted that to be called the Parish Advisory Coordination Team because that's exactly what I wanted it to do, to be an advisory group and also to coordinate the different areas of parish life and activity. Within the Parish Advisory Coordination Team, or PACT team, we have 13 individual areas. Liturgy, music, prayer, outreach, pastoral, young people, children, finance, building, social, hope in the future, and churches together, and finally safeguarding. The group meets every other month as a whole group and then we meet individually. So if there is a whole group meeting in January, in February I have half hour meetings with each member of the parish advisory and coordination team. So that may be through a full day or an afternoon and an evening another day. And I find the combination of those two enables us to share ideas and develop ideas and to face problems and find solutions together. So, uh, to begin with, we gather together a small group of parishioners uh, to help me build this team and, and we looked at different people and the needs of the, the parish and different people were suggested uh, and then through conversation and getting to know people, uh, we approached people um, and that would have been uh, about six, maybe six months after I was here, we actually began to form the group. Um, so at, at that early stage it needed to be something to, um, based on people's knowledge of who was involved in the parish already and, and different areas of responsibility that existed. We also wanted to bring into that, there had been the leadership programme within the Bolton Deanery, so we wanted to try and ensure that people who have been on that course were involved in the team as well. We have a, chair, uh, a chairman who coordinates the meeting, he puts the minutes out, he invites us and keeps the dates, the diary, etc. Um, so I think there are about 12 or 13 of us meet, representing each area of parish life. Um, Father gives us an overview at the beginning, and then, um, especially with the building changes, the changes in um, the use of buildings, at St Joseph's in particular. It's an opportunity, then, isn't it, for everybody every coordinator to give an update yeah. in respect of their area and what's happened in the last couple of months and for other people to ask questions mm -hmm. but it also then provides an opportunity to see where the links are across the different areas of responsibility for the different coordinators and first of on occasion things might need to tie in. Part of the uh, remit for the social group is trying to integrate um, both parishes that are remaining and the particular way that I think is easier to try and amalgamate the parishes is to get the children from both the schools um, involved in all sorts of things that are going on whether it's um, spirituality or outreach um, or hope in the future, um, it, we really need the support of the head teachers. They sort of help run the administration side of the, the church uh, through the office, which is based down at one of the other churches in the parish, St Joseph's. Communication is very, very important, I think, for, um, for a parish, particularly when you've got two perhaps different communities that are geographically set apart and so on, um, they need to know what time, what the liturgy is, um, what's going on in the parish, um, there needs to be a centre where information be, can be collected, um, collated and 
um, uh, and, and given out and so on. It's very important that everybody knows what's going on. We're kind of the nerve centre for the, for the parish in that in that way. Uh, we use email. We use um, we have a couple of um, email addresses. The office email address, also um, the newsletter email address. So that if any news comes in, we can then uh, <coughs> put it together and, and put it on on the newsletter and so on. The, the, a website is being set up by asking around. Uh, we managed to find somebody who had that expertise, uh, and, and I think that's possible in all parishes, really. Um, there's always somebody who has a, that, that sort of ability, and you've only got to ask, and, 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 and they will come forward. And that's what's happened with us. The website has taken off very slowly, but um, it's been coordinated, and... Um, lots of things are going to come to fruition from that, I think. I think it's important in the way that the coordinators are recruited from the outset that it's not just, it doesn't either just happen or is viewed by other parishioners that somehow the few that have always done the main work across the churches um, become the coordinators. I think it's got to be an open model from the outset and that opportunity and looking for new talent or volunteers and things is really important. And, and there needs to be a cross spread across... If you've got a situation like we've had, I know many parishes have amalgamated parishes, that there's a cross spread of people from the different churches as well. Yeah, I, I would say that's important. And I also think it's important that people know who you are so yeah. that parishioners um, can access. I think we need to do a bit more and hopefully with our new website, um, it's going to be easy, easier to identify. I think that's, that's really important. Arriving in the new parish where there have been two priests, one of the questions that people asked time and again was, Father, how are you going to manage to do everything? And the simple answer I had to say is, I'm not going to be able to do everything the same way that it's been done before. And I think that actually opens up a door for new possibilities to first of all say, we can't do things the way that they've done before because things have changed. And then I had to really think, what am I meant to do as a priest? And I'm meant to oversee what goes on, preach the gospel and administer the sacraments. And if you allow other people to take on responsibility within the parish, you still oversee what's going on. You're not abdicating responsibility, but you are delegating responsibility. And there is a freedom in that because it allows me then to concentrate on those areas of ministry that I was trained for. So, we have somebody who, and a group of people who deal with the finance. The finance committee are extremely competent and I liaise with them. The same with the buildings. The same also with areas such as hope in the future, such as the liturgy, such as the music. And then it enables me to be able to meet with the different people and talk through ideas and share ideas. And together, the ideas are much better than me saying this is how it should be. To give one example with administration, the last two priests, because this is the way that they were trained, would do all the administration themselves. Now we have a team, we have an office that's open two hours every day during the week. All of the correspondence will be dealt with in some way or other by the administration team. Therefore, because I still get a lot of emails, I can concentrate on the ones that only I can deal with and then we work much better as a team and it gives me time to be able to do things and, and to be able to live the life of a priest with great joy within the parish.